Hi everyone and welcome. I'm Emily Wishall of Wishall Wellness and this is my March 2020 edition of my interview series with women leaders and today I'm really excited and actually really looking forward to this conversation. I'm here with Allie Cole. Allie is a semi-retired beauty CEO turned women's sensuality and embodiment teacher. So I know Allie from um, taking her essentially embodied dance classes here in Boulder, which honestly is like one of the yummiest things I've done for my body. Um, just really intimate groups of women just connecting and dancing and moving um, to our bodies and connecting to our sensuality. Yeah. Um, so thank you yeah. for that. Um, so I'd love to know a little bit about your background as a beauty CEO and being in that business world because now <laughs> you're in a bit of a different world. Quite different. Um, yes. yes. Um, well, first of all, thank you so much for having me yeah. on your show. Hello, everybody. Um, yeah, it's it's quite a different stage of life that I'm in now. Um, I started doing this kind of movement when I was had a big job in the beauty industry, and I think it was it was really um, what drew me was that it was an antidote. It was a, a to the world that I was in. So. Um, mm. I was using my brain so much of the time, and although I worked in the beauty industry, which and, and still do some advising, investing, consulting, um, which is a wonderful industry for women, mm -hmm. but inherently the kinds of issues that you're facing, I was managing a big team, I was managing mm -hmm. a global brand, um, used a lot more of my mental capacities than mm -hmm. my physical self or my sensual self. And so mm -hmm. I found these dance classes and I would go to them and I would sometimes it would take the whole class before my brain would be quiet and my body mm -hmm. would just really be flowing and alive. But I always felt so good when I left. Mm -hmm. And so um, over time, so I, I, I really, um, I spent a couple decades working in the beauty industry and I was fortunate to have a lot of success in that area. So I felt at some point I kind of just discovered that um, I'm a, a, a lifelong student and I loved mm -hmm. what I was learning. And I kind of felt like I could keep doing what I was doing in the business world, mm -hmm. but it wasn't as satisfying as this new stuff I was learning about. Mm -hmm. So I went part-time with my work. We, we, I worked with my board and we hired a successor and I onboarded her. And then I went to part-time work and was able to dive a lot more fully into workshops, mm -hmm. not just centrally embodied dance, but mm -hmm. working with different spiritual teachers, feminine practice, um, and just really made that much more focus of my life, of my relationship. And, and kind of the the shift, the propeller to making more of the focus was because you were noticing how that was feeling so much more interesting to you. It felt good. Yeah. I mean, I was also meeting women who were much more experienced and good at all of this. And I started mm -hmm. to feel that I was... Um, although I was such a high, high achiever mm -hmm. in certain areas of life that are highly regarded, mm -hmm. there was this whole universe of other stuff that I didn't know about. And mm -hmm. I would meet these women who embodied, um, actually I would say one of the things that was the biggest aha to me was this one teacher who said she was going to teach us how um, about ageless radiance, our own ageless radiance. Mm, I love and, that. And you know, as someone who was at that time, I think I was like had just turned 40 or was in my early mm. 40s and mm -hmm. that was starting to become you know a wondering mm. um especially in the beauty industry you know mm -hmm. as this ages mm -hmm. um i was meeting these women who were older than me mm -hmm. who had just this vibrant juicy mm. wild aliveness that you could just sense mm. you could feel their heart or you could feel their magic or whatever it was um and i wanted some of that yeah. It became more important to me to be sensual and juicy and magnetic in that way and generous in that way and alive in that way than to notch a few more ticks on my resume or mm. in my bank account. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So I really great. pivoted first half-time work and half-time mm -hmm. kind of this other stuff. And now it's like 90% this stuff and, you know, life. There's no distinction for me between my centrally embodied practices. I'm a student. I'm a teacher, mm. I'm a coach, I'm a practitioner, um, I'm a wife, I bring it all, practice it all with it's my all husband. It's together. it's my life and You know, my and profession. I find that with, with most, I mean, 
I, maybe men do this, but I'm mostly around women, and I, I think but this is very particular to women, though. It's it's all interconnected. Our business, our mm-hmm. our family life, career. It's it's not segmented. Yeah. Well, it's certainly, well, more it can be. It yeah. Can I mean, be. yes. I was going to say it can be really compartmentalized, but I, yeah. I find this there's a lot more ease and overall maybe contentment when we can have more fluidity absolutely and congruency absolutely and I we talked about this earlier you know Mm -hmm. one of the skills that I really feel I've cultivated and again learning from others Mm. so it's I'm not the first and I won't be the last to walk this path adaptability and resiliency one of the most important skills you know being able to dive in deep to you know Mm. if you're going to be successful at anything whether it's teaching dance or running a company Mm -hmm. a certain amount of analytical thinking business thinking is required maybe you have a team that does that for you but you Mm -hmm. still need to set goals for them and make Mm. sure things are on track and then how do you switch gears to also have you know your juicy wholeness your aliveness and so um being able to navigate these worlds as women, Mm. the world of sisterhood and the world of intimacy and even our own solitude. Mm -hmm. You know, we wear so many hats and want to, Mm -hmm. and why choose, why not? You know, it's not all about being one thing. So, yeah. Yeah, yeah, Yeah. I I love that. And I love that keeping those words in mind, the adaptability and resiliency. Yeah. Because we can be all of these things and having the adaptability to yeah. shift between the two and being really resilient to sustain that. I mean, honestly, I hadn't thought of this, but it's all a dance, you know, and even yeah. in central embodied dance, like one of the um, modalities we work through is taking women through all these different emotions, through music, mm-hmm. through movement, through clothing in a very safe space. Mm-hmm. Um, and some of those are easier to access for different women than others. Some mm-hmm. women have a lot of difficulty accessing certain emotions, but they can really access others. Mm-hmm. And we practice in the studio and I practice in the studio what I want to be able to access under more stressful conditions out in life. Totally. You know, in the studio we make it the safest, juiciest, luxurious, private mm. container. It's so mm-hmm. safe and, and kind of um, holding. And then it's easier for us to try the new stuff mm. in that world. And then we get back into the real world mm-hmm. <laughs> outside the walls. We always we have sort of a buttoning up practice. I think you've been part of it when we leave the studio so you can drive your car and mm-hmm. navigate with people that have not been in this world. Um, yeah, I think we need safety and yeah. permission and yeah. sisterhood support Yes, to try these things which feel new, Completely. unfamiliar, scary. And all of those not things, us. safety, support, sisterhood, and support. Uh, I said support against. Yeah. What was after safety? Um, safety, support. Oh, was it maybe the third? Even guidance. I think the invitation, the permission. Permission. That permission. was the word I was thinking of. Because it is true. Like it's we're kind of playing with those shadow aspects, right? Mm-hmm. And, uh, to put it into some sort of um, more clarification. Like we have different aspects of ourselves, good and bad, that are easier for us to own than others. Right. You know. So maybe I'm owning that I'm compassionate. Am I owning that I'm beautiful? Am I owning? that I might be a bitch, or am I owning that I'm angry or bratty, All the, the full spectrum. And both spectrums can be challenging for us to um, own and claim. And what I've experienced through the Central Embodied Dance classes, as well as even just within my own work, the Art of Feminine Presence work in its own way of having that safe container to explore that mm-hmm. and be witnessed and yes. held and guided is so powerful to be able to own and claim that or hold that when we're in a more activated situation or triggering situation. Yeah. And and I think you bring up a great um, mo- critical pillar of our practice, um, the witnessing, mm. you know, because it's, it's not only being witness, but it's also witnessing other women. So what we work with, what we call kind of the healthy and unhealthy expressions of different emotions. So, mm-hmm. um, you know, there's a way of being a bitch which is unhealthy, which is mm. guarded and protective. And by the way, sometimes that's healthy because sometimes mm. we're in environments where we shouldn't let it all in and we mm-hmm. do need to have, you know, healthy boundaries. And um, But how do we empower the healthy bitch or the healthy whatever our thing mm-hmm. is that's difficult? Mm-hmm. In my family, sorrow was not very welcome. Like mm-hmm. we were not a family of criers. And um, to come to trust that letting the deep truth of my Mm. heart which includes oceans of tears Mm. not even over anything in particular Mm -hmm. you know um 
for me, the witnessing of other women in their depth, mm. which might be melancholy at times. It's just the deep feeling of the feminine mm. um, and feeling how magnetic that was. Yeah. It gave a huge permission for me. And for some women, mm. the bitch being one that's hard for mm. a lot of a lot of us are givers and we're so mm. nice. And um, when you see how sexy mm. it can be or how mm-hmm. powerful or how attractive or just enviable mm. a woman who can really own her queen yeah um, and so we really give through assignments and through witnessing and being witnessed so much free experimental space at your pace mm-hmm. to step in and try it on yeah yeah That's and a- just get feedback and feel you know what what is the clothing what is the music who's mm. your persona mm-hmm. of that archetype so what is i think people may be getting a, mm. a good general picture um but they might be wondering like what what is sensual embodied dance yeah um you know that's one of the things about it that i think is so hard to describe <laughs> that has actually limited its growth mm-hmm. um i kind of refer to it as a journey mm. that will alter your mm. perception of yourself it's- I like that. And you really come to know yourself. And it sounds corny, but it's one of the most universal experiences Mm. is that you come to know yourself and trust yourself as beautiful. Mm. You redefine sexy. Mm. You identify and cultivate your own form of sensual and sexy expression, whatever that means to you. Mm. As sexy as you want it. I mean, one of the biggest parts of the journey is teasing apart sensuality from sexuality because we yes, really study w- sensuality mm-hmm. and practice sensuality. I'd love for you to speak on that if you don't mind yeah. because I find too, if we start talking about sensually embodiment, that can make a, a lot of people uncomfortable yes. because they automatically maybe go to sexuality mm-hmm. um, and, and putting them together and love to just... I know, it's so, it's so interesting. We have like five senses. In what, exactly, in Isn't Western that culture, sensual? why we have collapsed those two because, mm-hmm. you know, taste and sight and touch and mm-hmm. hearing and scent, those are not inherently sexual. Mm-hmm. Those are human and mm-hmm. animals have them too, by the way, you know? Yeah. Um, so I'm not exactly sure how sensual and sexual, I think actually some of it comes from the patriarchy of like mm. women in their senses, women smelling deeply and feeling deeply mm. and emoting is disruptive to the world. Mm. And, and the order of things is inherent, you know, kind of came to believe in like keeping women in line you know which mm-hmm. is being burned at the stake and all that so mm. there's no science behind that that's my personal sort of whatever out of teachers I've had in classes and whatever um, but sensuality so we take our attention to our breath we take mm. our attention to the silkiness of our skin you can mm. do it right now the curve of your fingers let your even if you're watching this mm. as you're witnessing you can bring your fingers up just notice all these curves. You have so many knuckles and the range of how, and there's the curve of your fingernail and the skin on the inside of your wrist. It's Mm. so silky or soft. Is it warm? Is it cool? You just Mm. got so alive. If you separate your hands, the hand you've been touching is so alive and your fingertips that were doing the touching. Mm -hmm. So we take it slow, Mm. one thing at a time. Like that was just the tiniest portion of our body. Yeah, and how amazing is that of how good, like even just me, I was just doing that and how good, good that can feel. Yeah. It feels so good just to take, yeah. just slowing it down. I mean, uh, I, I think it's very intimidating for women and very overwhelming for women after a whole day. Most of us are working, raising mm. children, taking care of households. And even if we have a helpful partner, which not everybody does, mm-hmm. um, the burden of all of that and then we feel spent and all we want is chocolate or Mm -hmm. wine or tv or a bath or you know and all those things are Mm -hmm. fine there's nothing against any of those things but um i think if one of the things i hear from women is it's this permission that it can be much simpler and easier Mm. i don't need to all of a sudden be a pinup girl in a magazine or you know a sex crazed you know it's like not one house. or the other it's, it's not a not. black and white you can reclaim mm. you can appreciate your own beauty and you can reclaim and reconnect with your softness with the mm. scent of you with with your own hair mm. in in 30 seconds if that's all you have yes. and the great thing is often that invites you know 
a couple minutes at least because actually you can't get enough in 30 seconds, you know, and maybe yeah. five minutes is enough. You know, for me, listening to music is one of my favorite ways to mm. reconnect with myself. Um, maybe I want to connect with my husband after that. Maybe I don't. Mm -hmm. But even if I don't connect sexually, mm -hmm. I am more available. I'm in a better mood. Mm -hmm. I'm less stressed. I'm more present. Totally. Huge connection, I think, with us connecting to that. And, and very much from a scientific level, cortisol levels dropping. Yes. And less stressed. And our Serotonin. Our like sympathetic nervous system, yeah, can be more turned on and stimulated. Yes. So we're not so rushed. And I yes. so appreciate how you shared. We can do it in 30 seconds. <laughs> Exactly. You know, like when you're, like what yes. about if you're waiting in line at oh, the post absolutely. office, at the grocery store, absolutely. at where, a coffee shop, wherever, like you could do that finger you could. practice instead of looking at your And phone. you know, I'll just get, you know, nothing against Kegel exercises. I'm sure women out there mm -hmm. do them. I mean, you know a lot about mm -hmm. pelvic floor or whatever. And like, I'm not going to give any kind of opinion on that, but um, working our muscles harder for many mm. women, tightening things is actually not at all what's going to open sensuality for us. Yeah. Relaxing things is. Yeah. I mean, I have one teacher that actually has you practice pulsing your genitals outward, which may be too overt. You could certainly do it online. No one's going to know. Mm -hmm. um, but again, for me, those sensual practices, mm -hmm. just, just finding your wrist or mm. maybe you're wearing a shirt that's made of something that you know you like maybe there's even just like becoming aware of the fabric against your own skin mm -hmm. of leggings or a shirt whatever it might be your own hair mm. um yeah we don't need to go right to our phone we actually have a freaking playground of entertainment like right here yeah i, I love playground of entertainment <laughs> yeah and it's in case so nourishing because why is it that you know and it's not and it's not bad if we do turn to these things yeah. but if it's our only thing of always going to the wine or the chocolate or whatever it is the the binge netflixing to we're, to try and soothe ourselves what if we really could just nourish and just yeah. maybe take 30 seconds to do do that little touch and then recheck in like huh do i really want do that. i really want that right now or is maybe my body asking me for something else well or even i'd say i mean if we're drinking the wine because the savoring like the taste of that mm. and the scent of it i mean wine is so sensual mm -hmm. um yeah that's the same you know that's yeah. the same as the totally touch. that's a great it's yeah. just are we doing it to get somewhere else yeah um are we avoiding something mm -hmm. and how can we just slow down mm -hmm. you know that's just i mean i teach this partly because it helps me practice it more of the time mm -hmm. you know i'm a student i'm a teacher like i said before mm -hmm. it's like i also could always you know live more of my day in bliss always there's always more room. I would love to live more of my day in <laughs> bliss. Yeah. Um, and so with that note, because living your day more in bliss, I believe allows you to be of greater service mm. and to live more on purpose. And you work with so many women who, and you yourself are a women leader, but and also are working with different women in different leadership roles. Yeah. So I'd love to connect with you too about how do you find this, this movement, this really sensual movement, connecting with our bodies, relating to or impacting then how women are able to show up as leaders in, as in leaders. any way in all their mm -hmm. roles so one of the most dramatic transformations that i see unfold in this journey it happened mm -hmm. for me when i started um and it's is women waste so much of our energy in negative self-talk mm. and trying to control i mean whether it's stuffing yourself into spanks or mm. you know beating yourself up for something you did too much of or too little of mm. or um, didn't do perfectly the relaxing of self-criticism and the harsh voice mm. it, it's just incredible how much that softens like you know we're in a culture that is obsessed with beauty and youthfulness mm. and some very stereotype ways and the softening of that enables people to have so much more of themselves available to take out into the world whatever mm. that is whether that's raising children running a company mm -hmm. being an entrepreneur whatever you're up to in your life mm -hmm. getting out of this critical neighborhood and and trusting that this is great this yes. is good this is good enough yeah um, and being a little more available to That's, be over there, mm. trusting that this is a gift and, you know, mm -hmm. available and has all these yummy resources. Um, that for me is one of the greatest 
points of intersection where I think doing this kind of sensual embodied work mm -hmm. um, unleashes much more of what we all have as our potential mm -hmm. to be put against whatever we're up to in the I world. I love that. I love how you how you clarify too the relaxing of the self criticism. Yeah. yeah. There's so it's so much more ease versus and I feel this is a yeah. topic that keeps getting brought up but of um, trying to just like push through the limiting beliefs yeah. and like I just gotta like conquer my fears it feels such different energy to yes. oh let me just like touch my wrist and how yeah. does that also then allow for less self-criticism which allows me to be more available to that person in front of me or that project in front of me yeah yeah, I mean, if someone comes in and they have a really charged relationship like to their belly, mm. I'm not going to take them right to loving their belly. Mm -hmm. I'm going to allow them to find beauty in the in the arch of their foot mm. or maybe the feel of their hair or the music. Like mm. eventually they're going to they they fall in love with their belly. They mm -hmm. do. Mm -hmm. You know, it's just it happens over and over. Mm. Um and being more gentle with ourselves, you yeah. know. That is certainly something that has changed in me from, you know, my business career and, mm. um, yeah. I mean, when I was in business school, I have an MBA and that would be about the opposite of what we were taught, mm. rewarded, what was modeled for us. Um, and I think it's the, the relax, the relaxing self-criticism. Being gentle, being relaxing gentle. and, and, mm -hmm. and, and, um, going to well, where can you access yeah. power? Yeah. Where For, can you feel versus good? Only where can looking you find at the blocks, beauty? Yes. Maybe. Mm -hmm. Versus taking on your weaknesses. Yeah, oh. it's exhausting. Covering up your weaknesses or punching through them, powering through them. Yeah. I mean, there's plenty of things out there in the world that can help us power through. Mm -hmm. um, and sometimes maybe we need to and do that. And sometimes we do need to. But when it's the primary and only mode. Yeah, I like there's nothing negative. Mm -hmm. I, like I would I would never say don't do this. Or In fact, mm -hmm. one of the things we always say is, you know, we let women in that they just can't really get this right and they can't get it wrong. Mm. There just isn't a right or wrong about sensual and body dance. Mm. If you're in the room and you're feeling your body and whatever that means to you could just be energetic if you're listening to music mm. you know even if you're running your to-do list through your head eventually you find your toes rubbing on each other or whatever like mm. just being able to be in life without there being a right and a wrong is a huge yeah. permission yeah it is a huge yeah yeah yeah. yeah. so anyway for me it's been mm. life-changing because i come from a pretty black and white like family of origin and mm. schooling and all of that um, you know, the older we get, the more we realize that there is no black and white. There's mm. a million shades of gray in the rainbow. Mm. Um, so we try and make that available. Awesome. Yeah. Yeah. That full spectrum of, yeah. of, hum of humanity. Yeah. Finding and sensual embodied dance. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Awesome. Um, well, how can, how can people stay in touch with you or learn more if they want, especially um, those local that are yeah, watching? Yeah, for local want to women, a, we'd love to have you come in and experience a class, or we do privates and private parties. It's a great mm. thing to do with girlfriends. It's a great thing. That's how I finally went. Yes. Yeah, to do it with a private group. Feels yeah. safer sometimes. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, so, so fun. That, yeah, our website is sensuallyembodied.com. Mm -hmm. And you can find out about our classes below. there. Yep. Mm -hmm. um, I also do coaching. I teach different workshops with different teachers. Um, and generally, those things are listed on our website. You can also, our email address, everything is there um, to request. Our Facebook group is private because mm -hmm. we like to offer women the opportunity to um, have this be something that they can share or not and not have it mm -hmm. be known in their world unless they want it to be mm -hmm. so you can request to be included in our facebook group and that's another way we um you can follow us on instagram although we're not super media active mm -hmm. um yeah it's a pr it's more of an in, in person which we can do remote practice but we yeah. are um on instagram essentially embodied is our instagram as well awesome yep. yes. awesome awesome i love all that and yeah. so i love to kind of um wrap up, which this will turn into a more, little bit more of a conversation, but of asking you the, the question, uh, and definitely do, I would recommend, you know, maybe checking those out yeah. um, and checking Allie out because she has a lot 
to offer, even just outside of that central embodied world. Mm. Um, but as a woman leader, mm. how in your daily life um, you live or see yourself living out integrity, like an example of that. Um, and I've been you know, sharing and defining integrity. There's a quote from Gandhi. Um, you know how accurate the quote is, I don't know, but where he, Gandhi defined integrity as when what you say, what you think, and what you do are all in alignment. Um, and one of the things you pointed out earlier that you shared, I wish I could quite remember it, but when I asked about the women leaders in dance class and how it maybe even just gives them permission to be more of themselves, yeah. that really spoke to me. I was like, hmm, that being, having more permission to be yourself, to me, feels like being in integrity. Um, yes. But I'd love if you have like an example of what that might look like, like a, in, in daily life. Daily life. Yeah. I mean, the biggest one for me, <clears throat> I have come to really appreciate, is moving my body mm -hmm. every day in some way. And it doesn't need to be some intense workout class. Mm -hmm. That's nothing against that. I'm an athlete and I love that. Mm -hmm. um, listening to my body. Do I need to like dance I'm like a crazy person? Mm. Do I want to do some self myofascial release on mm. rollers? Mm. You know, I've been doing a lot of Pilates lately and working mm. on alignment. And do I feel pulled to go be in nature? Do I have five minutes or do I have an hour, you mm -hmm. know? But I really, 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 it's, it's so ingrained in me now. Mm. I just don't feel fully myself and like all my resources are available to bring to whatever the day holds mm -hmm. i have to move but mm. again it could be just dancing around with my toothbrush or mm. maybe if i've got a, i'm traveling an early flight it's just in the shower like mm. the way you wash or you, but for at least a minute remembering that I have a body oh and touch gosh. yes you know music's a big one for me so mm. listening to music um yeah that's yeah. mine. It, 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 I'm so used to above the neck. I'm so mm. used to using everything mm -hmm. above the neck. So I try. I, I bring below the neck online in some way. Yeah, and you and do you find? I'm curious if you don't mind sharing. Yeah. Like if you were to just live above the neck, versus when allowing all of you to come online, mm. how like what a distinction might be like either in a relationship in your life. Um, and you know keeping it generic but like how you might show up differently and in more integrity when when the bot like the full you is on board versus just coming from here well I mean at the risk of I hope I don't alienate anybody by saying mm -hmm. this um, but certainly as women I experience myself as much more magnetic and attractive when my body's a little bit awake and a little bit alive. Mm -hmm. um, I actually think it's true for men also. Like we're more trustable when we're not just Completely an empty head. Completely more trustable. You know, more present, more available, less preoccupied and feeling mm -hmm. like a thin layer of myself when I'm just in mental mm. space or distracted. So, you know, I experience more love in my life and mm. more depth more color more aliveness mm. when i'm not only above the neck mm. i i maybe i'm not as good a problem solver for certain things like i don't think i can i, I love above the neck and mm -hmm. i feel very privileged to have a a, mm -hmm. a, a gifted you know above the neck mm -hmm. um and it certainly has afforded me a lot of t you know the ability to have a lot of amazing opportunities in my life um so I, I, I'm an and, I'm an embrace and extend, mm. like, yes, have this be amazing, cultivate mm -hmm. this, success in the world helps us um, afford teachers and body work mm. and, you know, all kinds of things that all travel and all mm. kinds of amazing things. And there's a lot of big problems in the world needs. Yeah. Big intellectual, totally. you know, um, strengths applied against climate and the environment and all kinds of philanthropic challenges that we face. So I'm in no way saying only live from the body. Yeah. Um, and I feel the body having satisfying relationships and deep connection mm -hmm. um, quiet so much that even if you're in, engaged mm -hmm. in something intellectual, you're more available for that. Yeah, I, I completely yeah, yeah agree with that and I appreciate how you articulated it because mm. it's in a way that um, is a new way for me to hear it. So I appreciate mm. that. Great. Yeah. yeah. I worked for Microsoft for 10 years and mm -hmm. before I got in the beauty industry and they had this embrace and extend thing. And I don't, 
necessarily agree with it about technology and the way that it was used, mm -hmm. but I have come to love that philosophy. Mm -hmm. I, I don't, I think everything we have learned and everything we have done has made us who we are. And it's not necessarily about um, denying those things or setting those things mm -hmm. aside. If that's healthy to do, then great. Um, but this embrace and extend, yes, and, and, and. Yeah, and yes, and, and. Yes, and we get to have more. Yes, and we get to have more access. Yes. Yes, and we get to be more available. So, yes. Yeah. Yes. Beautiful. Yes. Absolutely. Absolutely. Awesome. Awesome. Well, definitely check out Allie's work. And again, the website will be linked below. And thank you so much. And I love, too, one thing I wanted, I just realized, too, this will be going live in March. So right around springtime. Great. And so when you were sharing those words of more color and aliveness, that feels really just appropriate seasonally of, yes. of this of this new season of spring with new growth new life and so also bringing that into yourself of what would you like to experience as a new life in your body and experiencing yourself maybe in a different way and allowing even just 30 seconds a day to play an experiment with absolutely. what that would be so absolutely yeah. yes awesome so thank you so much thank Honestly, you I really appreciate you really being here and your time and thank thanks you everyone listening. yeah for tuning in and um, yeah take care bye-bye